Hi, this is Pad Love with Pat's Two Cents. I want to share a little something, something. You know, some of us carry so much baggage through our lives, and we don't know how to lay things down. You know, we look at programs where people have these houses and they call the programs hoarders, and they won't throw anything out. They've got their baby's first dirty diaper laying up in some box somewhere as a, as a momentum. Crazy stuff. Okay, now, many of us have emotional baggage. Many of us have scars. I mean, there is not one person on this planet who has not been hurt in one way or another. So we all carry scars. What we do with those scars is something else. Now listen, I used to have a, a customer who would come by the shop to get her hair done, and she wouldn't leave all her stuff in the trunk. She would be, bring in her pocketbook. She would bring in a bag full of, oh my goodness, she had so many bags. It was almost as if she was loaded down from shopping, but these weren't shopping items. These were things she carried everywhere she went. And I believe she added 30 pounds to her bodily weight just by carrying all this stuff everywhere. And I always wondered, why does she carry it? She's not doing anything but laying it up against the wall. Well, there are people who hoard things in their house. They keep things, they won't throw things out. They won't throw old curtains out because they were the first curtains they bought in the first house they bought when they were married. Or they were the, I mean, all these things have sentimental value, that's fine. Take a picture of it, throw the thing away and get rid of it. But be that as it may. My point in this is many of you need to throw things away that you refuse to throw away. Why? I don't know. Because number one, Mama Sita here, she don't do pain. I don't do pain. Homie don't play that. No, I ain't going there. So if something just starts to hurt me, the first thing I do to handle it is, God, please take the pain out. Okay, I don't like hurting. I'm going to tell you right now, I've hurt all my life. And the hurt, the pain, the weight, the sorrows, the fears, the burdens, the turmoil. Oh, my goodness. That did not come to a close until I gave my heart to the Lord. And I started asking God to get inside and clean up my mess. Some of you need to get God to come out and get rid of all that stuff that you've been hoarding all your life. Your right to be bitter. Your right to resent. Your right to be frustrated. Your right to be disgusted. Your right to be angry. Your right to be spiteful. Your right to be sarcastic. Your right to be mean. Your right to be disrespectful. I mean, all the things. And then you turn this whole thing around and say, I'm just going to look after me. Me, myself, and I. Nobody else is going to look after me. I look after myself. I don't need anybody. And you're telling yourself this crap. And you know doggone well you're lying. You know what you need. You know that you have needs. But you don't want to feel them. But you don't get rid of what you are feeling. That's the crazy part. So you go through life, you're limping along, you're hurting, this one hurt you, that man did you wrong. That woman took all your money, your house, and everything you own. She drove you into bankruptcy. The other person next door had a court case against you and you'll never forgive them because they lied on you and won the case and you have paid dearly through the nose. I mean, listen, <laughs> if anybody had a right to come down hard on this planet, it was Jesus Christ because he was the only one that had never committed sin. You and I, on the other hand, yeah, we won't even go there. So some of what we experience, we deserve. But with Jesus Christ, no. 
when he died on that cross, when he took those scars on his back, when he took the abuse, the mockery, the oh, the ridicule, all of it, he did not deserve any of it. Check that out. But he took it. He submitted. He gave in to it. Why? Because he knew his death would free us from being bound by all our baggage. Ah! See, when Jesus says, and he says to you and me all the time, it's an open invitation, you guys. Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Now, there's a part where he tells us to take his yoke upon us. Take his yoke. Because his yoke is easy and his burden is light. That's not like our burden. Our burdens are heavy. Our burdens will drive us straight into the grave. We don't need anybody to dig a grave for us. The grave is being dug by all the burdens we carry around. We're being slowly killed, slowly demolished by anger, by bitterness, by unforgiveness. Oh, man, come on. Yeah, I know there are some people on your list that as far as you're concerned, they have no right to be forgiven, but neither did you and I. So join the party, join the club. Jesus forgave us anyway. Hmm. Ergo, he says, if I'm to forgive you your sins, you ought to forgive them theirs. If you don't forgive them theirs, I don't forgive you yours. Yeah, that, that kind of makes it plain. Forgiveness is one of the first keys to healing. Forgiveness is one of the first keys to freedom. Forgiveness is a main key to peace. When you forgive for God's sake, you forgive out of obedience to his word, and you ask him to start healing those old, those old wounds, trust me, the healing begins right there, right then, at that moment. And you begin to notice changes. Things don't have you flinching, jumpy, edgy. Doesn't have you going through changes emotionally like you used to. And you start realizing, wow, God's been doing a work in me even though I hadn't felt it. But then when a crisis arises and your reaction tells you that you're not the same person, then it's, you start to realize this thing is real. This is real. You don't have to go through your life angry. You don't have to go through your life rehearsing reruns. Some, you know, I know people who like to go to movies, the old movies. They like to watch the reruns back in the 20s, the 30s, the 40s. Well, I hate to say it, but many of you prefer to watch the reruns of your life, the reruns of the painful episodes that happened when you were young. You want to watch the reruns of the abuse, the reruns of the misuse, the reruns of the, ma the bad treatment, the reruns of being lied on, the reruns of being played for a fool, the reruns of being abandoned, the, re the reruns, all of these reruns, you got them stacked up sky high because that is your source of entertainment. That is your way of justifying all of your ugliness. But look what they did to me. Ooh, but look what she said to me. Ooh, but look how he played that off on me. That was not right. I got right. To... No, you don't. If you are in Christ, you are not your own. You were bought with a price. You do not bring old baggage into new land. You don't pour old wine into new wineskins. You don't pour, you don't mix rotten old food with new fresh cooked food. You don't do that. You throw the old away. And if you can't throw it away, if you don't have the strength to do so, you ask 
God to throw your junk away. To go down in your basement. Go in your closet. You know, now I know, I know some of these things are legitimate. I do, I do, I do. I'm not one who has gone through unscathed. I dealt with a lot of emotional scars. When people treated me with, with disrespect, I knew I still had to treat them with respect, forgive them, and still love them. Yeah. And there were times I felt it was unfair. Why do I always have to be the one? Why do I always have? It doesn't matter. The bottom line is if you're always the one, then when life starts to happen for you on your behalf, you start realizing that you're also the only one being blessed in certain ways. Special ways special ways of blessing. Why? Because God goes down his list and his memory and he remembers when she could have cussed him out. She forgave. When he could have kicked her out, he fed her and clothed her instead. Ooh. He takes notes. And when God takes notes, your blessings start to come in from all the sacrifices all the things, all the rights you gave up for his sake. He does not let that go unnoticed or unrewarded. When he says in his word, your labor of love, and sometimes love is labor, baby. Your labor of love is not in vain. You can take that one to the bank. Love when it hurts. Forgive when it makes no sense. Throw it away when you have the right to keep it as a momentum. Get rid of it. Don't hold on to old baggage. It will do nothing but eat at you physically, eat at you psychologically, eat at you emotionally, eat at you spiritually. Don't let these things eat away at you like Pac-Man until there's nothing left but minor remains of death. God gave you life to live the abundant life. Don't seek the living among the dead. Throw that old dead stuff away and live in the name of Jesus. God bless you.